I show it to be six o'clock. This is a regular meeting of the Eastland City Commission. It is uh, May 15th. I've asked Cecil Funderburg to lead us in the prayer and Richard to lead us in the pledge. Cecil? If you would pray with me. Father God, we are so thankful for the opportunity, Lord, to serve the citizens of Eastland. We're especially thankful for Shirley and James as our newest members. Father, we just ask that every decision that we make be pleasing in your sight, that you guide us and direct us in all things that we say and we do. Father, we just ask for your, for your blessings on this country. Uh, Father, we pray for our country because it's in, uh, seems to be in pretty deep trouble and we need you. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. If you haven't silenced your cell phones yet, I would ask you to do that now. First item of business is to approve resolution 2023-05, canvassing the election return and declaring the results of the May 6th, 2023 general election. And before we do that, I first want to thank Zach Dar and Ben McNabb for their service to the community and for their times they served as commissioners here at Easton. We appreciate their time and effort that they put forth. And uh, honor, I guess we need to do this, but as we I uh, mentioned a resolution canvassing the returns and declaring the results of the May 6th mm -hmm. general election of the city of Eastland, Texas. Shirley Stewart had the most, ver or had 147 votes. Cecil Funderburg had 152, and James Doyle 144, and they've been declared the winners of, of that election, and we now need to make that official uh, with the approval of this resolution. And I also want to mention that we have with us a special guest of Bill and Patty Dolan, Bill, a long-term employee of, yes. of the city, and they've been a, a great help to the community through many years. We appreciate y'all coming tonight, and, and of course, your precious daughters. Yes. Here, so good to have them with us. I need to approve this resolution, 2023. I will approve resolution 2023-05. I'm sorry. A motion from Richard. You'll have to second it, won't you? I, oh, okay, yeah. Still on. And I will, okay. yeah, yeah, you are still on. And I'll second. And uh, second from Cecil. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And I also vote for that to make that official. Any, I want to Motion carries. Now, ad administer of oath of uh, office. You will, James and Shirley. Cecil. Yeah, they need to stand. Sorry. Raise your right hands. Repeat after me. Aye. 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 Charlie Stewart. Cecil so Thunderbird. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly, solemnly swear, or, swear affirm or affirm. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully, faithfully execute, execute. The duties of the office. The duties, the duties of, of the office. office. Of City Commissioner of the City of Eastland, Texas. Of city, of city Commissioner of the City of Eastland, Texas. Texas. And, will, and will, will, to the best of my ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and, protect and, defend and defend. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution, the Constitution and, laws and laws. Of the United States. Of the United, United States. And of this state, so help me God. And of this state, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Good. I'll sign that. I'll collect them here a little bit. Okay. Now, the election of city officers, the first one is the chairman or mayor, and the nominations are open for that position. Mayor, I think you've done a fantastic job of leading us, and I would uh, move that uh, you be that you uh, be asked to serve again as our chairman. I move that you be elected by acclamation. Okay. Uh, a motion from... Cecil, a second for Richard to nominate me as, as mayor and, and by acclamation, so we'll uh, vote for that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now, the second position that's held now by Richard Ross Sanders, the chairman pro tem, and nominations are open for that position. 
I'll nominate Richard Rosander as Chairman Pro Tem. I'll second. Got a motion from Shirley and a second from James. Any other nominations? We'll vote for that one as well. All in favor of Richard being uh, Chairman Pro Tem? Aye. Okay. Right. Anyone opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Secretary or Treasurer, uh, Secretary Treasurer is Cecil Funderburg. We'll open nomination for that position. I nominate Cecil Funderburg. <clears throat> Got a nomination for Cecil. I'll second. James is seconded that nomination. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Assistant Treasurer. The nomination for Assistant Treasurer. We have both of those. We can fill those with the same nomination, as far as I'm concerned, the exact same title. I know that uh, James Doyle and Shirley Stewart be appointed as Assistant Treasurer. Right. Second. We've got a second from C uh, Richard. We've got a motion from <laughs> Cecil and second from Richard to nominate James Doyle and Shirley Stewart as Assistant Treasurers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. The public comment. We have nothing on public comment. They approve the minutes of the April 17th meeting. You've got a copy of those in front of you. Uh, we'll entertain a motion for those. I move to approve the minutes of the meeting of April. A second. We've got a motion from Richard and a second from Cecil. And any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. I did vote for that. Financial report. Leslie. We have the March financial report there. We've done the other thing for April yet. Yeah. Seems like seems like we just had a commission meeting the other day. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is your shortest month. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you do have the sales tax report that we have showing our receipts for the month of May, which were excellent. And um, we're very pleased with the way sales tax is going and hope it continues through the rest of the year. Yeah. That's the best May we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Keep getting better. We appreciate that. If you look over, for that. If you look over <clears throat> to March and have any questions, just give me a call. Okay. Anybody have any other questions for JJR for Leslie? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Board of City Commission may discuss and take action on the following agenda items. Item number one is discuss consideration of the second reading of Order 23-893, amending section 1913, planning and zoning board, adding alternate alternate board members. We did this the first reading last month. Yes, sir. This this is just basically to mirror the uh, BOA board. Uh, we have some people in the community that would want to serve as alternates and not as full members, and just trying to keep things moving so that way we can ensure quorum when the need arises. This is the second reading. Anything I need to add, Tony? No, I don't believe so. I think this is just something that, came, like you said, it, it just keeps us from having to um, cancel meetings since if we don't have a quorum. This way we can ensure that things can move, not get held up as far as uh, progress and, and additions to the city. Okay. I move we pass ordinance 23 that J93 for the second reading. The motion from Richard to pass order 23-893 on a second reading. I'll second it. James seconds that motion. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item is a discussion and consideration for approval of new board member for the Planning and Zoning Board. Yes, sir. Um, and ma'am, um, the PNZ Board met last Monday, and uh, they uh, got three applicants, two are brought to you as full members and one as an alternate uh, 30 days from I guess today uh, that we become an alternate member um, in front of you there are the applications that we received for that Tony 
Yes, the, uh, the applicants that we got are all um, people that have um, lived here in the town and uh, one new addition to the town. Uh, the applicants were Bill Colmer House, Rebecca Massingill, and uh, the new person in town is Jill Warren, who is the wife of um, Ryder Warren, who's took over for Tom. So um, they were all very interested in uh, helping the city out by serving on the board. And since we had um, Mr. Arlette move out of town, that created one vacancy. And with James uh, being brought on to city commission, that opened up another one. So uh, this is good timing that we were able to get these people to uh, come forward. Okay, two of them are full board members and one of them all. Yes, sir. So what uh, my recommendation to planning and zoning and their approval to move this on to y'all was to have Bill and uh, Bill and Jill uh, come on as full members and then um, within 30 days for you guys to go ahead and approve Rebecca to come on as an alternate once that position is finalized after 30 days from the second reading today. Um, the It would be good to have her as an alternate because I was informed that uh, Ms. Camacho, who has been on PNZ for a while, uh, is going to be moving outside of the city limits, so we will be losing her here in a couple of months. So it would be good to have somebody lined up in the alternate spot to go ahead and have them be able to come on if we are not able to find another person to fill as a full member at that time. Okay. Tony, you mentioned uh, you mentioned a uh, resignation from the board. Oh yes, David Arlett had moved outside of the city limits. He was he had that's served. That's well, and well, with uh, losing Mr. Doyle to you guys, yes, sir. Um, I think that there's no requirement that Mr. Doyle resign from a, from a committee. Well, I believe since he's coming, you know, PNC commission has come here with a recommendation. Right. So then he would be basically able to live there and he did it. on both boards. I believe that's what we had understood was that. If there's any monetary benefit, then that's what it does to determine the and so we're checking, right. we're checking into that right now it's, because Yasko says I have not been We've got uh, Richard serving as a commissioner mm -hmm. and all the environment board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but the economic development uh, board would be a little bit different than planning yeah, and zoning, yeah, wouldn't it's, it? I mean, it's, a lot it's different, yes. I'm because sure. since planning and zoning comes to the city, I don't know. So does economic development. Well, we need to be clear about whether that's a, a well, an opinion or a fact well that's what we can do is it, voting on these members we're not gonna well i guess we would what we could do is go ahead and have um jill come on as the second alternate for now in 30 days while we're trying to verify with james if he can stay on the, that board or not it was my under my understanding that he couldn't but i have no problem you know he, he's he's a, you know james is a good mind to have on that board and he's done it for a while so if i don't have to lose him i think that'd be great so we can definitely verify with uh, with um, Eileen how that you know if that is a, you know if he can stay on and still move uh, Jill on as an alternate and not upset the apple cart until we can get a final and if need be we can have her come back uh, next month if it's determined that Mr. Doyle is not allowed to be on that board anymore and then we can have her move up. Yeah, I think. Eileen may tell us something different. I think he's able to do that if he chooses to do that. That's his choice. Okay. Yeah. I think is where that gets into. And all yeah, Richard's on economic development. I'm not trying to get rid of him in the slightest. I understand. So, I understand. Yeah. You're trying to, and, and you're, you're right, it can be a definite, double dipping thing, but it also can be a, an avenue of information and in, in helping both boards right. understand right. what's going on. The, yes, sir, yes. for sure. Now, if I can but, keep him, I'd like to. Let's just make sure there's not a reason why he can't, and it's his decision, personal right. decision. Well, but what we can do to keep this moving is to go ahead and... and I think your suggestion is a good suggestion. Yes, sir. The motion needs to be worded in that way. And do that. I move that uh, the first position be filled by Bill Culver, <coughs> and uh, by Jill Warren as a second motion. No, 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 sir. As a, for, yeah. for Bill to come on to replace Mr. Arlette as a full member. Okay. And Jill and Rebecca to come on as alternates there you go. once oh, that, those okay. positions okay. are finalized. Then, then I amend my uh, motion to that uh, Bill Culverhouse replace Mr. Camacho and that uh, Jill and uh, Rebecca fill the alternate positions. Replace Mr. Arlette. Mr. Arlette. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Cecil made a motion to have Bill Coverhouse be a, a 
full member of the um, planning and zoning and have Jill Warren and Rebecca Massey will be alternates. And uh, Jill will be the first alternate and Rebecca the second alternate. And uh, that is a motion I see so in a second from Richard. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Good deal. City Manager Briefing. Uh, yes, sir, on the GLO flood mitigation stuff, um, I'm still talking with landowners um, in, in some conversation with um, some engineers. We're going to have to kind of put a cutoff date for them to either participate in this or not because we've got to get to moving forward on this. Um, <clears throat> Friday, Commissioner Frunderberg was here and we had the final public hearing uh, for recommendations uh, from HDR as part of our H and H study, uh, they came up with some very decent uh, solutions to help with the flooding issue. Uh, we just got to figure out okay um, signs and uh, the signals out there. Uh, still waiting an answer from TxDOT. The dam repairs, that was kind of part of one of the deals with HDR. Uh, we are still going to do some, a little bit of dam work, uh, part of the GLO. And now at the airport, that project's well underway, uh, expanding the aprons. And by the time it's all done, said and done, it's going to be uh, a great benefit to the airport. That's about it. Any questions? May I ask a quick yes, ma'am. Just uh, without going into details, can you just kind of summarize what the GLO is? Uh, the GLO project is uh, was a it's through the general land office and it's for a flood mitigation project um, to help reduce the flooding in Eastland and it, it it's, it's made up of different parts. All the parts uh, kind of work together. The first part is the cleaning. Not, excuse me. Uh, clearing of some vegetation along the north and south fork of the Leon River, which we have to get landowners permission. They want to go back a certain way, but they can't go into the riverbed itself and move dirt. Yeah. But they can go to the edge and clear and grab stuff and pull it out. Um, the second phase of that is going to be, uh, they still haven't, we still haven't got a clear answer what they want to do with Ringling Lake Dam. Um, and that because there's some wetlands that possibly have to be mitigated uh, if we do too much there and uh, clearing some trees off uh, Lake Eastland Dam and, and possibly some spillway repairs and the, uh, the last part of it will be uh, curbing guttering some streets to use them as water flumes to help move the water. That's kind of the broad strokes of it. And uh, the second part of that was that uh, Flood infrastructure fund grant, which we got a new H and H study out of it, kind of works hand in hand with that off some of the recommendations. Okay. Anything else? Before we go on, I'm going to say a couple of things that I intended to say before I let JJ start. I'm all. Uh, two things have happened. This is not a criticism, but this is to make y'all aware. Uh, Follow back to you. Know, uh, about the saw that we lost. Uh, my opinion is, if we have something that's newsworthy that's being put on Facebook, the commissioner, JJ needs to know, and he needs to tell the commissioner what's going on. I found out about that saw through somebody that won't make a donation to, to pay for it. He told me about the saw, and, and uh, I just laughed. He said, what are you laughing about? I said, well, JJ had not told me about this saw yet. You know, when I talked to Jay today, he said, we didn't find out about it for a couple of days. And that's not a criticism, and it's not a big deal, other than when you go out and you put it on the news or it's in the paper or Facebook or whatever we do, and something like that happens, and we don't know about it, and somebody asks us about it, we're going to do it, do it, do it, And if it's newsworthy, and that means if it's being put out on Facebook or whatever, if you are doing something or something has happened and you're trying to raise money, we're good somehow make us aware. Uh, I actually went on uh, Facebook and followed the fire department, I guess is what it is. 
just to so if something y'all put something out there I can hopefully see it. Same thing as the police department with public work, whatever we're doing, uh, keep us aware. That's not a criticism. That's just something that's me personally, but I think all the commissioners would like to be aware. Uh, uh, and, and I know we've got somebody donating and, and paying for that saw. I think that's great. I guess that's, that's a hats off to our fire department and somebody stepping up that quick and say, yeah, we'll donate and, and buy you another saw. I got this cool as it can be. So we thank you for your efforts and everything you're doing. The second thing, as I drive around Eastland, and I don't know how we need to do this, and we need to get our heads together, but the grass is growing not on the curb, but between the curb and the street. I don't know who that falls on and where we want to draw the line, but I think we need to make a public, the mayor or the commissioner or somebody needs to make a, a public plea for people to uh, try to clean that up and, and help us as a city make that better because it's getting to be a real issue. Uh, I know last year we talked about the one out there by the woodlands and how bad that was three foot tall uh, growing down the far end of Plummer, uh, that type of deal. So uh, we need to have a discussion somewhere along the line about whatever coded for me. I don't want to write tickets or anything, but I think just a letter or a note in the paper or something uh, asking people to help us keep that clean if they can, you know. Yes, sir. The, I believe the code refers to that uh, the property owner is responsible up to the curb line and the, the their side of the right of way to keep it mowed down. I'll double check with Terry in the morning and see if he's you know what the code actually says pertaining to that. And if if not, we can figure out what we need to do and just maybe make a plea, like you said, for people to well. Yeah, if we need to know who's responsible because someone, if it is something out of compliance, and we definitely need to handle it. If it's around city property, we need to handle it. Yes, I've seen stuff around city property that probably needs to be addressed. Yes, sir. So, anyway, let's do something with that. Let's get a plan. Uh, we can make a public plea and uh, the Project Eastern Pride and all those things that have been in the past. You mentioned that, that Mr. Hoffman, that was a coup, coup, coup. We lost our old toads, they moved away, so we all have to <laughs> <out. laughs> uh, anyway, I want to say that. Next is uh code compliance, Tony. Yes, commissioners. Uh we uh opened April with thirty-nine uh cases. Um, nine new cases were open, zero were closed. That left us with a month end total of forty-eight. Uh, total violations opened were 18, didn't have any closed. Uh, there were two junk vehicles. Now, the reason that code compliance is so light, Terry was out uh, with medical for uh, quite a bit of uh, April, and so that's why these numbers are so light. He's back in the office, um, full cleared, and he's able to get back on it again. So we expect next month to have uh, more results like you normally would see. Okay. Anything else for Tommy? Oh, and uh, Terry told me that he didn't have a place to really notate it on his graph, but we got a big, <coughs> big payment of somebody that was here in town that had uh, owed us quite a bit of money on water, and it was through Terry and the police department going after this individual. We ended up getting a pretty decent sized check to pay off what they yeah. owed us. So it was over a thousand dollars, I believe. So oh, good deal. This one. Good, good work. Stay on top of that. That's good. Chief, please. Oh, I stand, I'm sorry. I'd just like to, as, as on part of the police department and myself, I'd like to welcome Ms. Stewart and Mr. Joel to the City Commission. We're excited about y'all being on here, and we do appreciate your service and helping us move this city forward. We enjoy y'all being here. That's what you call sucking up. April, we had 301 calls for service. We had 57 reports taken. Uh, we had 443 business checks. These are something I pushed when I came on, and our people have just really done this, and we are getting compliments left and right at the office. So these business checks were actually leaving cards in their doors to let them know, and I've had quite a few calls about that. 13 arrests, our arrests were are down a little bit. Um, we had one of our top officers is training right now. One of our other ones has been going through some canine training. So we were down a little bit there. We did deal with 16 cases that were filed with the DA's office. 
Uh, 95 citations were issued with 261 warnings for 356 contacts. Our animal control officer, our secretary, has been out with her mom that about cut her fingers off. So she's been out there. So we've had to use our ACO in the office quite a bit. But uh, anyway, she's issued three citations and uh, <coughs> and four warnings. And we've had uh, 55 calls for service, even with her sitting in the office that she's had to take care of. Seven impoundments. Four dogs have been adopted. Um, we kind of had a busy month, even though we had all this other stuff going on. We had the uh, the shooting at 104 East Sedosa, which ended up being a, a guy got shot in the face and was supposedly held up inside a trailer house behind this this house. Um, that kind of situation, there's nothing pushing us. I'm not going to send my guys in there. Uh, after multiple attempts to get him to come out, I called in Abilene SWAT. Abilene SWAT come down. We cleared the, the two trailer houses. He had left that residence, but after an extensive search, which I can't say enough for my young officers, they did a fantastic job. We turned over every rock. They went, we went in every abandoned house in this city. I did not realize there were that many. But we, we everywhere we went to look for this guy, he eventually called and turned himself into us um, for a cheeseburger. So I told the guys, we'll buy a cheeseburger all day long if we can get a felon out of it. So that's what we did. He turned himself in. We got him off the street. He is still in jail. And we're looking to get him sent away. He's a pretty, pretty dangerous guy, and I'm glad to have him off the street. Um, we've had some large drug busts again last month. Our canine team had a large bust for Ranger PD, actually, where we got lots of fentanyl, lots of meth, another great bust for her. At this same residence that we had this other deal at, but dealing with a different family, we had a bad family violence situation there where a minor was strangled. Uh, we placed that guy in jail, and he's still in jail, not getting out. Our canine team also hit a bunch of THC gummies, which are, THC is what's in marijuana, but this was the strongest measurable amount that they've ever, that the, that the people that tested have ever seen inside the gummies. So we were excited to get those off the road. Uh, Sam and Jeff where just- that, Tim, where was that? Here in town somewhere, right out in, in East, East, East Bank. Okay, because you were in Ranger on the other Ranger one. Ranger on the other one. She went over to assist them on the other one over there. And she's made several I mean, we've made several smaller busts, but that was the, the most significant one. Sam and Jeff just continue to move forward. They're doing great. Jeff's moving right along with his training. We're excited about that. We keep getting him, uh, getting more and more training for him. We're getting him up to speed on things. We did the donuts for for dads. It's actually for the dads, but in years past, uh, we haven't had a lot of parents show up, so we always send our officers up there. We had a large group of officers that went up there for that. We only had two officers that had to go in and sit with kids this time. So that says something. We have a lot of parents there, and we were excited about having those parents at our school. That's a great thing. Um, we had two vehicle pursuits this, this last month. Uh, neither ended any major damage, multiple drug bust. Um, we're continuing with our training. Uh, one of the things we're looking at now that we used at DPS was an FN303, which is a less lethal option that I'm looking at and researching right now that we will be looking at later on to, to help with situations with people that we end up having to, to take down without having to use lethal force on. Um, but April was a pretty busy, busy month for us. Um, we've jumped through hoops with this guy, getting him put away on the shooting. But again, I would just like to say, I'm so proud of the Eastern Police Department for the way they handled this. Our guys stepped right up there, put themselves in harm's way. When I got there, they were holding the perimeter. I didn't have to do much adjusting to it at all. They did a fantastic job, and of course, hats off to the Abilene SWAT because this is a number of times. I know at least twice I know that they've come and really built us out when we needed them. That's about all I got. Thank you. Any Thank questions you for this? Keep it. Great. Hey, let me have a quick question. question. Yes, ma'am. You, I heard you mentioned fentanyl. Is that a problem here in Eastland? I yes, ma'am. I've a, heard of it. I it's a problem a nationwide, but we're seeing a lot more of it here in Eastland. A lot of it coming off the interstate. And we're hitting quite a few fentanyl busts. Just yeah, thank you. Chief Wheaton. All right. Commissioners, thank you for your time. Um, in April, the Eastland Fire Department responded to 62 calls for service. Uh, that put us at 2.06 calls per day and brings us to 499 calls uh, for the year. That's the fiscal year starting in October. Uh, we had 47 events that occurred in the city and 13 that occurred in the county with two mutual aid uh, assistance. 
to our neighbors. Uh, we did get to install one smoke detector again this month. I think we'll end up covering the town one smoke detector at a time, but uh, we're in the work. Uh, yeah, uh, we were. We had five calls this month that occurred after 10 o'clock and before 7 in the morning. Uh, we attended two structure fires, four grass fires, one vehicle fire, 36 EMS events where we assisted the, uh, uh, the ambulance transport. Three motor vehicle accidents, three public assist, and 13 some type of false call or some type of investigation. No hazmat rescues occurred this during this month of April. And our roster now is carrying 26 uh, volunteers. We'll have 27 tomorrow. Um, so I, April, uh, you can see April and November when we get into these spring light, fall light months, uh, the, the, the mild weather slows us down a little bit, not compared to last year. Last year was a little bit of a caveat, but this year it slows us down a little bit. Um, so, but still, uh, we're still carrying 2.3 calls a month out of the fire station down there. And I think it's 71, average at 71 a month. Um, we had a good rip bed, rip fest. We gave away the free breakfast. I believe we gave away 120 or 140 breakfast tacos that morning. Had a, had a good time there. Uh, to follow up on a project I brought to y'all a while back, it kind of, I think, went cold. Um, I followed up with TextDot. Uh, they talked to the engineer, uh, Jordan Pierce, and or Jordan Perry. Uh, Jordan Pierce was one of our members of the park. Jordan Perry, well, he said we're 60 to 90 days out on getting our traffic control device on semen that will we'll be able to manipulate the traffic uh, when we're entering and, and uh, for emergencies. So we've had several close calls there where vehicles, the, the first vehicle sees us approaching the right of way so they stop, but the one behind them doesn't see, doesn't know why the car in front of them stopped and it's several deals. So they're, they're, that project went a little cold. I followed up on it. I'm hoping 60 to 90 days we'll have some type of traffic intervention device there. Um, our new SCBAs were due to go in service tomorrow. The vendor called and canceled. It's now next Tuesday. We're really excited about that. We have already trained with them in house um, and, and does things so that we, if you recall, six of them have the thermal imaging capability on the uh, harness, and, and I think it's going to improve our safety. And uh, I think we'll have a, the benefit of that equipment for many years. We'll serve this community and our, our members. Um, our KHL saw, I was going to mention that to you. Um, that's what I think Gordon Graham calls unintended consequences. Uh, the intent of the Facebook post was to educate the public that that saw was out there hoping someone would bring it back. But uh, once again, as we, we have seen numerous times over and over and over, this community just continues uh, to, to support our emergency services. And then the call started coming in and uh, a lot of things started happening in, in, in uh, citizens and civic groups and even businesses uh, wanted to replace that saw. And, and, and that wasn't the intent of the Facebook post. It was to make it aware that that saw was out there and hopefully we could recover. But uh, we did not recover the saw, but uh, it has been replaced and numerous attempts from different people and civic groups were, were trying to do that. And, and it's, it's amazing we continue to see the outpouring of support and, and donations like that. Uh, right now, the fire department, we are uh, again in a workforce a trial and tribulation. Uh, one of our firefighters is in a long-term medical leave. We're predicting another four weeks. And our uh, ASIA firefighter resigned and uh, went to Anna Fire Department. So we're in our fifth week of a, of a double vacancy. Uh, so myself and firefighter Dylan Cogman are working back and forth to cover the station. This we're entering our fifth week for, for advertising for job, the vacancy, and and we've had, we actually have zero applications pending at this time. We've interviewed four uh, and uh, was 
we're, we're unable to come to it would, whether it'd be a good for us or them. So uh, some of our challenges uh, are our feedback that we've gotten from a couple of candidates and is they don't want to work by themselves. We're, we're losing that, uh, that, that they're, it's, it's not appetizing to them because they're afraid to work at the fire station by themselves. So we, we've had a couple deny the job for that. So uh, we're hoping three to four weeks, one of our volunteer members, uh, we put through the fire academy. Uh, she will finish up any, within probably a week to 10 days. We look forward to having her do that and state certified. She will complete her EMT in the first week of June. And that is, well, as of right now, all things stay static. That will be our next uh, paid staff member. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, I want to tell a story real quick about our Engine 6. Uh, last week, actually it was two weeks ago because we started a new week here. Two weeks ago, we backed the engine into the station and there was oil just dumping out. So we, it was so late in the evening, we parked it overnight out of service and we came in the next morning and our city mechanic, DJ, Jackson, who is also a volunteer fighter, came down to to look at it and uh, pretty much informed me that the complexity of this project was above his expertise. So we're, we, I called Pierce, uh, the manufacturer of the truck that's in Denton. The truck was not drivable. It, it, it obviously, it wasn't even able to start. <coughs> Um, as we go through this project, and I'll make this brief, but uh, the trials and tribulations that we went through, DJ hung in there and continued to go, and he removed the part. We got the part off. That's a big step. And and I keep looking at Bobby because Bobby allowed him to come down there and spend his time, and that's he ended up getting that part off, replacing it, and getting it put back on, and that engine is back in service uh, as of that. That part was $2,100. Um, I'm... I don't have anything to truly base this off of, but my opinion, the city was probably looking at about a ten thousand dollar bill. It would have had that engine towed to a facility where those type of EV emergency technicians, emergency vehicle technicians, would have replaced that part. It would have been built. So Bobby's team through DJ, I mean that's what it's about, uh, and and I think. It, it's a huge hat off to them for what they did for the fire department uh, and the city. Huge savings for what we were fixing to get into. And the engine's back in service and running like a charm. So we appreciate that immensely. It works can explain that. Um, also, oh, we got to participate in the Eastland High School Career Day. We handed out about 10 applications. Of uh, those 10 applications we handed out, 82% of them were female. <laughs> 81, they did, right in there, majority were female and that were interested in, uh, in the fire department. So I found that very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And to last mention today that we are flying the flag at half snaps because today is uh, the Fallen Peace Officers Memorial. So we just ask everybody to think about that for. And uh, that's it. That's all I have, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate everything you're doing. And again, that's, I think it's a, a compliment to Eastland and to the fire department, all of you emergency services guys and people willing to step up and help us when there's a need. I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed somebody found that song and didn't return it. I was with Dan uh, pretty clear. <laughs> Anything else for Chief Williams? Okay. We now will go into executive session in accordance with local government code 551 071 parentheses 2, consultation with an attorney regarding potential litigation. We will go with uh, 641.